Hello friends, and welcome to Sleepy Stem Stories, and also it's raining, a bedtime podcast about science, technology, engineering and maths for those who have trouble switching off, but want to switch over for a while. Tonight's rain comes to us from the Coyabeno jungle in the Amazon basin of Ecuador, and tonight's words come from me, Alia MacDonald a proud representative of the M in STEM. This is episode two, and it seems I've now set a precedent for this as a tri-weekly podcast, and I will aim to up my game to a bi-weekly podcast. It filled me with such nerdy delight reading all of the responses from the last time, and one commenter suggested that I use this time to highlight the works of mathematicians I admire, so let's do it. Now there is an entire history of foundational mathematical discoveries that we can have a look at over time, but I love letting people in on the little secret that, even though humans have come so far in their understanding and we use things that someone used maths to create every single day, We still don't know it all, not even close. Which is why I have chosen the juicy combination of Dr. Hannah Fry and the field of her PhD thesis, Fluid Dynamics, as our topics for tonight. A living, breathing, butt-kicking mathematician who works in a field of maths we don't fully understand yet. One of my favorite things about fluid dynamics is that there is a difference between the words liquid and fluid. A liquid is a state of matter between solid and gas. Now a solid has a shape, think of a block of ice, and as it melts, it becomes a liquid. It loses its shape and takes up the shape of the vessel it's in. But unlike a gas, it will not expand to take up that space. It just does its best and fills up as much of the glass as it can. Very optimistic. A fluid, on the other hand, describes particles that move with flow. Water is both a liquid and a fluid, but air is a gas which also behaves like a fluid. Think about leaves caught swirling in the flow of the wind and how that's essentially an invisible whirlpool. Now would be a good time for us to make some fluid dynamic flow of our own and take a deep breath in. Hold. And out. Feel free to drift in and out of this podcast. There is no life changing information in here and anything you find interesting will still be interesting tomorrow. So, Dr. Hannah Fry, if you have somehow never heard the name before, I am honoured to be the one bringing your attention to her. She is an award-winning maths communicator, using just about every medium we have available. TV, radio, podcasts, and best-selling books. To bring people from wherever they are into a place of deeper understanding and appreciation of maths. Not only does she dominate the UK popular maths communication scene, knocking down the public's perceptions of a mathematician, she understands that with great power comes great responsibility. And in 2021, she resigned as the trustee of the Science Museum in protest of their sponsorship from large fossil fuel companies. Bold, gracious, and courageous, but that's not even the half of it. She is a serious mathematician, so let's take a dive into her PhD thesis on fluid dynamics, titled A Study of Droplet Deformation by Hannah Fry in January 2011. Dr. Fry's 205-page thesis starts by letting us in on why droplets are important. 
though his cute little semicircular gems on our car windows are also a fact of life in many technologies. They're everywhere from aviation to medicine to agriculture. And one of the things I love so much about living on a planet where 71% of the surface is covered in water is that we have in our brains an internal model of fluid dynamics, an intuition for how it works. And now we're forming our mathematical descriptions, equations to more externally model what's going on. So using that supercomputer brain of yours, imagine a droplet just chilling on a surface and you come along and blow over the top of it. I'm sure you can imagine how the droplet will bend or deform from an unassuming semicircle into a teardrop shape and start running down the surface. In great detail, Dr. Fry's experiments look at the motion of your breath, which remember is a fluid, flowing over the top of the droplet. She then looks at the movement of the liquid inside the droplet. And finally, the boundary where these two motions meet in interplay. Ultimately, what Dr. Hannah Fry does is derive a set of algorithms or models where she can numerically determine what forces are going on, what's happening, what does the picture look like at a given time when given the initial starting conditions. The first section, looking at the flow field across the top of the droplet, treats the droplet as if it were a solid, making the situation a little more manageable, but still relevant. It's common in science to focus on one particular aspect of what's going on and block out as much of the rest as you can. But there is a limit to how far you can take that before everything is just a sphere moving on a frictionless surface. Now, I don't at all want to reduce this work down to pictures, but I actually highly value any interesting pictures arising from STEM. And the diagrams in Dr. Fry's thesis are beautiful. The nature of studying fluid flow leaves you with these stunning swirly diagrams which remind me of a Van Gogh painting. Think Starry Night or Cypress Trees. Figure 2.12 shows streamlines for the steady flow in air over a semicircle over a range of Reynolds numbers. A Reynolds number is a measure of how turbulent a fluid is. So a low Reynolds fluid would give a smooth flow. Sometimes they can be laminar and almost look like the liquid isn't moving. And a high Reynolds number is like a turbulent rapid. Lots of vortices and eddies. Fascinating in its own right, but let me paint you a picture of this figure. So in amongst all of the maths and words, we see a set of diagrams, each with an outline of a semicircle, sitting like an igloo. And over the top are these sweeping, flowing contour lines. And to show their varying viscosity, Fry has used a rainbow gradient, making the diagrams look like a stop motion northern lights over a semicircular igloo, which I guess it does describe on a very really small scale. The delightful pictures only continue from there. As Fry moves on to look at the motion inside the droplet, we get these semicircles filled with gradually shifting waves as they reach their steady flow state. A fair question to ask would be, is this maths? It sounds an awful lot like physics. And overall, that is a false dichotomy, my friend. It's a team effort. Beware of dividing disciplines into separate boxes. I believe much of the scientific progress humans make from here on in has to be interdisciplinary. And although the overarching theme of this work is physics-led, it's completely underpinned by Fry's deep mathematical understanding and abilities. So what was the maths used? 
Well, how, how far back do you want to go? By the time you reach degree level in maths, you are standing on a mountain of mathematical framework. So in this paper, we see the need for things that you probably take for granted that you had to learn at one point in your life. Like understanding negative numbers and decimals, recognizing common shapes and being able to read graphs. All of the things that students demand a rationale for in maths classes, they're all in here. Cartesian coordinates, polar coordinates, rearranging equations, substitution in equations. We've got trigonometry, vectors, matrices, and I know that there will be a few people out here who cannot believe that I have made it this far into a podcast about fluid dynamics without mentioning calculus and the Navier-Stokes equations. The Navier-Stokes equations are a complicated and delicate set of partial differential equations describing the conservation of momentum and the conservation of mass of Newtonian fluids. Fry goes on to make use of Taylor expansions and infinite sums and a full lifetime of mathematical skills which she keeps in her toolkit. And with that, she doesn't just observe and measure the phenomenon of a fluid flowing over a droplet. She goes on to describe it in such mathematical detail that she comes out with a model, an algorithm that applies to a whole set of fluids flowing over droplets. The concluding paragraph of her thesis reads, I'll quote, More work is required to understand the cause of the instabilities which the results suggested. However, the generalized nature of the algorithm in that it can handle liquid films or droplets of any initial shape within a boundary layer is an exciting prospect with much potential. Building in the effects of surface tension and gravity to the model would appear to be possible, as would including surface roughness, humps, or wells along the wall to which the droplet is attached. These additional features would make the model directly applicable to aircraft icing, along with many other industrial and medical applications. This combination of technical mathematical ability and well-positioned oversight of dynamic systems is typical in Fry's work. You can see it in her modeling of the mathematics of love, her TED talk, and in her work as a UCL lecturer on the mathematics of cities. Think about how on a large scale, crowds flow just like water. So by now, I'm sure you will want to know where you can check out some of Dr. Hannah Fry's mathematical outreach. There are places aplenty. She forms one half of the Curious Cases of Rutherford and Fry, a podcast. You can see her number file videos on YouTube, and I can recommend her audiobook, Hello World, for a really accessible look on how algorithms and dynamic models influence our life. As a bonus, she narrates it herself. I love when authors narrate their own audiobooks. And also it's her birthday this month, so happy birthday, Dr. Hannah Fry. I will leave you with a few mantras to take with you from this podcast into dream world. Firstly, not all mathematicians are ancient stone carvings. We have current living mathematicians and they are amazing. Not everything in maths is solved. We are still developing new techniques and fields like fluid dynamics. Most of the happening things in the world of STEM right now involve people from different fields coming together and collaborating, combining things like maths, physics, and biology all in one and using computing to do it. And finally, don't let the world tell you that women are in competition with each other. Empowered women empower women. I love seeing women in STEM lift up other women. Now let's imagine some fluid dynamics in nature. Think of a woodland stream gently flowing 
and the deep water in the middle flowing fast, the water on the banks slower, showing the non-slip condition. As the water flows around the rocks, you can see it forming a tail of vortices and swirling eddies, and you drifting off to sleep. Aichiva. Hi, Elian here again. <laughs> I, uh, I really do have to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for the support from the first podcast. Thank you so much. I was particularly moved by a university professor who got in touch to encourage me with the form of the podcast and what they call giving people permission to be nerdy. So you don't need permission to be nerdy, but if you feel like you do, then here it is. Get into it, be yourself, be nerdy. There are whole communities of people out here ready to share in whatever your nerdy passion is. I do read all of the comments and I can't always reply, but I still really enjoy seeing them. So thank you for that. Feedback is always welcome. I'm particularly interested this week in feedback on the length of the podcast that you would enjoy. I'm going for about 15 to 20 minutes, but as you can see from this episode, it's barely enough to scratch the surface on most topics. This podcast is something I am determined to get better at. So if you'd like to help me out with that, then consider supporting me on Patreon or just fueling me with the comments and sharing this podcast. Thank you so much. Catch you later, calculator.